Good evening, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd. And this show is brought to you by our friends at Massage Magazine Insurance Plus. Massage Magazine has been exploring touch therapies for over 25 years and has used that industry knowledge to develop the best value liability insurance in the business. And I want to thank Eric Dalton for sponsoring this presentation and offering Massage Nerd listeners to a 10% discount on all his home study courses. Use the code MN10 when you check out at ericdalton.com. <laughs> Welcome everyone, this is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd, and today we have a special guest, George Skaroulis. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> Skaroulis, yes, yes you did. Yep, hey, Ryan. Yep, hi. Well, it's so, so good to see you again. It's been so long. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be seen. Yep. And um, we want to start off by um, getting to know you a little bit. So what got you involved in the music industry? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I've been playing piano ever since I was a kid, so um, it's always kind of been, uh, you know, a passion for me and uh, kind of second nature. So um, I've been doing it for so long, and it, it's just kind of my, um, you know, it's the way I express myself the best, I guess. So um, back in 99, 1996, I released my first CD. Um, you know, when I started playing music as a kid, I didn't really have um, much training. I was kind of self-taught. My mom was classically trained, and um, I tried lessons for a short period of time, and I really hated the structure of that, so I quit, and I never really went back to, you know, reading music. So I still didn't read music, but I still wanted to create music, so I've been doing that ever since. And um, in 96, I or, pretty much released my very first CD and uh, and here we are 15 years later and lots of music later and I'm still doing it and still love it. <laughs> so um, is this what you do for full time then? It is. Yep. And you can't imagine doing anything else then, right? Um, well, I do have lots of interests and so music is certainly my, my primary uh, passion but I do love cooking and photography and and so I'm starting to kind of meld all those things together so um, I've got a couple things in the works I'm working on a, a digital cookbook I, I was in the restaurant business for 20 years so I still have you know uh, a great appreciation for good food and, um, and entertaining and all of that so um, you know after I release my next CD that's the next step is a digital cookbook of some of my kind of kooky recipes that are healthy and Mediterranean and um, not traditional in any way. I guess that's kind of but, part but, of personality. But somewhat healthy then? Yeah, definitely healthy. I'm actually, um, next month, um, I'm going to be doing a Mediterranean cooking class at the um, Cancer Wellness Center here in Atlanta. So um, I'm going to get to kind of share some of my unusual recipes with cancer survivors and they have a very good program. They have the, the TV you know, screen set up in the kitchen and I'll be sharing some of the recipes that I like to make um, with a group of those people. So I'm looking forward to my first cooking class. <laughs> Great. And, and you said um, you don't really read music anymore then, right? <clears throat> Not at all. Yeah. I, I, I just never captured it. I, I just didn't really have the patience for it and um, uh, I still don't read music, but it hasn't stopped me. Yep, and one of my favorite artists, Tori Amos. I mean, she's known for that too and stuff. That not reading music and oh, I didn't know that. I'm a yep. huge fan of hers, but I had no idea she yep. was. Um, you know, I didn't know she didn't read music. Yep, because her first album was um, actually titled "Why Can't Tori Read." So be before she made it big and stuff, but um, she does doesn't read music. And I'm hearing more and more artists like that too and stuff. Is that? getting to more more common or easier would you say or um i don't know if it's more common but there are certainly a good core of musicians that are either self-taught or just have the natural gift i mean i remember when i was in greece one year i was you know looking at usa today and there was Pavarotti, and it mentioned that um that he didn't read music either and i was so shocked because you know he's so respected and was so respected as a as a as an opera singer, and you would just assume that somebody like that, you know, would be well versed in reading music, and you know he didn't, and it was a natural thing. He just 
you know, opened his mouth and the music came out. So <clears throat> there's lots of artists that are, you know, I'm slowly finding there's lots of artists that are um, not tied to the to the sheet music thing and just and just kind of create and perform, you know, from the heart. So. And every single time you um, play, let's say, a certain song, is it going to be a little bit different then, or is it... Just, always, yeah. Yep. It'll have the same, you know, structure for the most part, but it'll always be different. It's never exactly the same. And why did you choose this kind of field, um, the more relaxing, let's say, massage field and stuff, to have your music? Well, I mean, it's always kind of been my style. My mom, um, she was classically trained, and she played a lot of Chopin, which is very gentle, and... And so I think that's what I grew up on. And, um, I, it, you know, it, for me, it was therapeutic. I just always, you know, found it relaxing for me to play that style. And I like all kinds of music. Um, I mean, it's possible in the future I'll do something rhythmic. But my, you know, my personal preference is I, I'm really drawn to music that is um, emotional and melodic. And um, I love a lot of soundtrack music, for example. And, you know, I really feel like that's, that's where I'm going. That's where I would like to be, you know, included. I've done some documentary work for PBS and, um, I see my music being used in film and I'm excited about the passion CD because there are 19 little themes and they're almost like little soundtracks for a different movie, but they all fit together really beautifully. So there's all different colors and moods in the whole CD, but, uh, you know, I would love for some of these pieces to be, you know, featured in a film one day. So that's kind of the genre that I, I feel like I best fit in. But so many, um, you know, therapists and healers and, and body workers have embraced my music because it is. There's a lot of, there's a lot of breath in the music. There's a lot of, I think there's a lot of power in silence, you know, um, and so a pause, a pause in a conversation, and you know, a pause in the music, it kind of gives people a, a, an opportunity to, to breathe a little bit and slow down because it's such a crazy world we live in. And, and so my style has been pretty gentle for, for a long time. Yep. It may change one day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and David Otto um, says, congrats, George, on achieving your Passions Project goal. Was that through Indigo? Indiegogo, yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And can you explain a little bit about Indiegogo, what it is then? And yes. Um, it's a website for creative people. So if you are a sculptor, a musician, a painter, um, if you're trying to release a project but you need funding and you, and you need help from your fan base, uh, it's an opportunity for you to create a video and you'll say, hey, you know, my name's George Skaroulis. I want to create this new music. Uh, the CD is going to be called Passions. You know, here are all my expenses and what I need to make it happen. And you basically offer people opportunities to help. But it's not like they just make a donation. They get something back. So, um, you know, if somebody made a donation for $25, they'd get a signed copy of the CD when, as soon as it's ready. Um, a couple of people, for $100, they, their name was in the credits for the CD booklet. For $1,000, I wrote songs for people. And for $3,000, I will do a concert anywhere in the U.S., wherever you are. So um, these various incentives um, inspired people to make donations and said, you know, I want the concert or I want the song written for me that I get to name myself. So um, all of those different incentives, you know, appeal to people on their different, you know, um, level of what they want to contribute. So um, I was just blown away by the response when we finally released the campaign. It was a two-week campaign, and two weeks um, we were just overwhelmed with such a strong response, and so it's it's about to be released, and it's I'm very excited. Have I already said that, probably? Yep. <laughs> But, by the way, I mean, um, the massage community just loves your music, too, and it's so nice to have it in, in playing while they're um, massaging. Um, do, are all your CDs like that um, good for playing in massage rooms? And um, Most are. There's a good um, handful that are um, 
instrumental only with no vocals. And so some therapists don't like any vocals at all. And some like a few, you know, vocals thrown in. But um, <clears throat> I would say, um, and I try to keep, you know, the therapists in mind because I do have such a, um, a, a wonderful following with therapists. So, you know, I try to keep the album the full hour long, if not longer, um, and try to keep, you know, the pace. There's no, um, I try to make sure that there's no song that will break the mood or break, you know, the moment for, um, for the session. So I would say that, you know, I th would think my top five would be, or my top CDs for massage would be um, Sanctuary, um, Reunion, um, Second Nature, Return to Homeland. Um, Imagine's really good if you like, you know, the cover songs like Amazing Grace and Somewhere Over the Rainbow and you'd like all that stuff solo piano. That's a great album for that. Some, you know, some therapists don't want the music to be recognized so people can completely tune out in their session. Um, so I have a variety of, you know, familiar music and most of my music is original. Okay. So that's what Passions is. It's all going to be completely, you've never heard it before, but it feels like you've heard it before. You know what I mean? It has, it's a comfortable, um, I feel like the, the music's comfortable and easy to listen to. Okay. And then um, Gloria Coppola asks, um, when are you going to make a um, Lomi Lomi CD? She's still still waiting for it. So. <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> I haven't seen her in a while either. Yeah. Um, we'll, I'll have to talk to her about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to get a Lomi Lomi session because it's been a really long time. I've forgotten. So maybe if I had a good Lomi Lomi session, I would um, be inspired to create some music for that. Yeah. <laughs> and what inspires you to make your music then? What, uh, is there anything that kind of triggers it? or? No, I mean, uh, some people think that, you know, I, I sit and play piano all day long, and I really, I don't. I, um, there are times that I don't play piano for weeks, so I try not to force it, and, you know, like when it's time for me to create or when I feel inspired to create it's usually because there's a lot on my mind and sometimes it's not you know if I'm going through a stressful time that's also you know very often a time where I'll sit down and play and just kind of like get the emotions out and and so like I said before it's kind of therapeutic for me and sometimes you know the most beautiful music comes from you know a troubling time so yeah, and, and then um, don't, you know, if I'm really, really in a great space and I'm happy and things are going great in my life, uh, like now with passions, I feel like the music has a it has a happiness. It's bright and warm, and you know, it's definitely um, passionate. Okay, and then um, aren't you um, don't you have a um, reflexology background? Did you say take some classes in that? Shit, um, I um, am a huge reflexology fan, and. <clears throat> Locally in Atlanta, there is the Heal Center run by um, Ross Zollinger. So I took her, it's a 14 week course, took her course and loved it. She's also an aromatherapist. She's from South Africa. She's fantastic. I mean, you may have met her at the um, some of the conventions here locally. Yep. So took her course and um, I, I don't practice it because I just, I, I really just don't have the time, but I love it. I, I, I love getting reflexology and enjoy doing it as well. And, uh, I've always liked it. So, and what's your favorite style of massage to receive? Um, a variety. I like like if someone's working on my feet, I like it nice and deep. Um, um I like just some pretty firm pressure, really. Um, but reflexology is one of my favorites. Yeah. So it actually treats your soul, then, right? At <laughs> fun. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the name of your next album. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and then um, with the whole uh, music scene and stuff, everything just seems to be going more digital. I mean, is that harder on artists or easier or how is that? It's, um, it's transitioning and it's becoming easier. You know, initially when I was doing all the massage conventions, for example, I would have my booth set up and sell CDs and that was the way to go. But so many people are... Um, you know, downing music to their iPods, which is great because all of my music 
available on iTunes and Amazon. So <clears throat> instead of me having to show up and sell a physical CD, people can buy a collection of my music, or um, it really makes it available so much faster. And um, you know, instead of having to download a CD onto your, you know, onto your laptop or whatever, I mean, most people just buy it on their phone and then create playlists. And um, so it's been a transition where I've, I, like I said, I've missed being physically there at the conventions, at the AMTA, at the FSMTA, and all the conventions that I used to attend. Um, I've missed the physical aspect of not just the CDs, but seeing people and hugging people and connecting. But, um, you know, now that most people are kind of going that not everybody is into the digital thing. I understand there's some diehards, you know, and, you know, not everybody wants to download music. So um, what we've had to do basically is um, when I release a CD, there will be a limited copy, maybe a thousand or two thousand copies available initially. And so hopefully people will get those copies in advance. But then after time, you know, as, um, as something new comes along, you know, we just offer all the CDs available digitally. So hopefully that won't be too inconvenient for most. Yep. And then um, David Otto asks, um, um, can you ask George, does, does a bought CD album um, give the owner license to perform and allow public performance of their music and consider massage sec sessions public? Um. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, does a, a bought CD or album uh, of yours give the owner license to perform during massage, giving some um, performers allow public performance of their music and consider massage sessions public? Okay. Good yeah. question. Yeah. Wow. Because <laughs> I know there's lots of spas that are apprehensive about playing certain music because they need a license, and um, I've always been under the you know, I mean, certainly there are, uh, you know, I'm a member of ASCAP, so certainly it, it's important for a spa to to follow the guidelines of, of, you know, making sure that they're paying for music. But for, indiv for individual therapists, and I mean, I don't really, um, I encourage therapists to use my music and spas to use my music. You know, I don't encourage, however, um, you know, the piracy that goes on with, you know, a therapist saying, oh, my God, the CD is so great. You should borrow it, burn a copy, you know. And so what people, I, I, you know, I know that um, people sometimes become um, complacent about that. And so you have to remember, this is how I'm making my living. That is like somebody saying to you, you know, you should go to, to this massage therapist, you know, they're half price and, you know, it's, it's, it's a poor analogy, but I just ask that, you know, that everybody be mindful that this is my livelihood. So if you want to support, you know, the music, buy your own copy and discourage, you know, all the piracy because that's, you know, I don't want that to be the end of the road. You know, I want to continue doing what I love and sharing it. So I don't think 10 bucks for a CD is a lot to ask. And um, hopefully it'll bring you hours and hours of um, of great music to work by. Yes. So, yes, because I, I totally agree with you. Because the thing is, that's your, they're actually eating into your livelihood and other artists' livelihood and stuff. I mean, look at it. It's kind of, I mean, it is stealing. I mean, so. It is. Yeah. So. But you know, it's 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 so easy to do, and I, you know, just I ask that people just kind of be you know somewhere aware and respectful. And uh, if some you know if you want to share it with somebody, share share it by word of mouth and say, hey, go buy it on Amazon. It's it's worth it, you know. And that's the best word of mouth endorsement that I could get. So I'm grateful for all of you who have jotted my name down for your clients, or you know. Um, or forward them to my website or iTunes. I, I'm I'm grateful. Yep. And then Laura Allen says, um, if George would do re reflexology for charity at one of the massage conventions, he'd have people lined up around the block. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I actually, you know, back in um, I don't know if you were around at this time. I think you were. 
when, when the AMTA was in Atlanta and um, I pitched this idea to Angie Patrick with um, Massage Warehouse and uh, let's see, Bon Vital, I believe. And so I pitched this idea about doing the reflexology in these convention halls and we called it the Sanctuary. And that was when the Sanctuary CD came out, which was one of my favorites. So, um, you know, Angie loved the idea and I mean, she's still doing the Sanctuary as far as I know and uh, raising lots of money for charity. So I'm really proud to be part of that. Um, that idea and that concept and I know thousands of dollars have been raised for for good causes and um, so yeah I would certainly be open to that I'm, I love doing it absolutely so yeah because it's gonna, uh, it's gonna be in your, your your home city and stuff like that this year American Massage Conference so in Atlanta so <laughs> I am going to be there in one one form or another okay <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then um, with, with with your music too, do you? Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about how you get inspired and stuff like that. But is there a certain um, theme and stuff like that you have through each album, or, or do, is it kind of mixture then? Or um, I uh, each album does kind of have a theme. Um, like um, Second Nature, was, which is one of my older albums, it had a, a totally natural theme, and everything about it was kind of green, and even the songs, you know, I did the theme from River Runs Through It, which is a beautiful movie that Robert Redford uh, directed years ago. Um, so I do kind of, yeah, Return to Homeland has a very Mediterranean Greek feel, and that is the, you know, kind of tribute to my heritage, my Greek heritage. Um, Sanctuary was kind of created for therapists and healers, so that's why it's been so popular with with so many massage therapists. Um, they all do have kind of a theme, and um, I like concepting the whole thing and it all making sense, and the graphics making sense, and the, the songs and the feel, um, you know, kind of being solid ground to create music around. So. And, and some of the people in the chat are asking if you can play a little bit later and stuff, so. Um, that's possible. Yeah. I am sitting right here at my piano. Okay. So, <laughs> so whenever you want to break out and start playing, it's fine. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> and, and the re reviews are amazing, and especially, um, I mean, Billboard Magazine and stuff like that. I mean, you got a lot of the big names and stuff like that that have reviewed your music, and they're all great reviews, too. I mean, Thank you. yeah, I, I, it's just impressive to to get out there, and I mean, um, w with with reviews too. I mean, have you ever had a bad review? Um, if I have, I haven't seen. It. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure there are some, but um, no one's ever brought them to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess not. Yeah, <laughs> and and you also do um, tours too. I mean, do you go out and tours and stuff around the United States? And um, I do a few concerts a year. Um, I was in Denver about three months ago. Um, there's a Greek church out there in Denver, the the Metropolis. They invited me for a big celebration, so I did a a concert for them, but it was open to the public. So there was a good handful of massage therapists um, from Colorado. Um, that attended and um, so I usually do some benefits of various kinds um, I did a Christmas concert this year and like I said this Saturday in Atlanta I'll be doing um, a concert uh, it's a 50 seat concert on a Bosendorfer piano so I don't do a whole lot of performing but I feel like with the new Passion CD coming out um, I will be I hope I'll be doing more performances even more house concerts too. Those are those are also great. So um, you know, or concerts for chapters. You know, for uh, massage therapy chapters. I mean, I'm certainly open to that too. So um, it'd be a nice way to kind of reconnect with so many people that use the music for their work. Yep, and I also see that you um, you sell wholesale too, so people can actually sell in their 
massage businesses yes. and stuff like yes. that. And and how long have you been doing that? And what gave you the inspiration to do that then? Well, because I feel like um, there's a lot of therapists who use my music and they want to share it with their clients. Their clients are like, "What is this music?" And, and you know, I know there's some therapists that carry products, you know, from you know aromatherapy oils to you know um, stones or any you know some of the tools that they use in their in their daily work. Um, and the music is a, a thing that usually catches people's attention. So I've, I have been offering, you know, the CDs to therapists who want to carry, a, you know, a handful. So uh, it's a nice way to either, you know, sell to your clients or it's a nice also way to, uh, to give some of your better clients. So if someone's been very loyal to you and been seeing you as a therapist for years, you know, you can hand them a CD on their birthday or, or, you know, treat them to a little thank you by giving some music that they can take home and listen, you know, when they're chilling out and they don't have time for a massage. So. Yeah, and for myself, um, when I had my full-time practice, that was my biggest um, seller was CDs, just because um, what I would do is I would put a now playing. Um, right That's good. The, yep. So that out, helped out wonders and stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And and the thing is, um, can you have different um, requests, different CDs if you're doing wholesale, or is it just one CD that you can get? Or? Well, at the moment, I mean, we've we pretty much. I mean, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but like Sanctuary, for example, is is has been very popular, but uh, it's out of print at this time. So it's a lot of the CDs, a lot of the older CDs, Return to Homeland, Reunion, Sanctuary. A lot of those are out of print because of the digital thing. So um, there's just a few. Like at the moment, I have Imagine and I have uh, Songs for Sophie, and the Christmas CD is available, and soon we'll have Passion. So we'll have a handful of CDs available, um, you know, for for wholesale. So that's certainly an option. It is kind of limited, and I hate to, you know, I hate to not have product, but it's also it's just kind of the way that things are slowly evolving, and um, I, I don't want to invest in you know a huge inventory of CDs that are going to sit on the shelf. I'd rather make it fluid and and um, you know everything is always available digitally. So what I encourage a lot of the therapists you know that aren't maybe computer savvy, they probably have a you know a kid or a client or somebody that would be happy to you know, buy an album on, you know, on iTunes for them and, you know, do it that way. But there's usually somebody around that can, that can find what you're looking for if, you, if you're not comfortable, you know, downloading music yourself. Yeah, and, and David Otto says, what? Out of print? So. <laughs> it's, say it's been a hard, you know, it's been a hard couple years of transition of running out of CDs that are popular, but, um, kind of have to go with the flow or else you're, you know, you know, it's like cassettes, you know, back in the day when cassettes were the, the bomb and, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. less and less these are just slowly getting away from that. And now you find digital download cards. So I know I'm, I, I hate that, you know, a lot of people don't have access to the music because it's not, you know, all, um, available on disc, but hopefully in time, everybody will kind of just get on board, and um, it won't be, you know. Yep, and then they can purchase it like on iTunes, Amazon, CB, CD Baby, and stuff like that. So, yeah, and those are all big names too. So it helps. And and was it hard to get, was it hard to get on um, iTunes and things like that? Or uh, not really. I mean. Um, I guess since I've been doing this for 15 years, I mean, once you have an album out and you have a, a fan base, I guess, you know, I pretty much just submitted all the titles and they, they automatically go into the playlist for iTunes. And they, yeah. and not, I mean, there's some things that I have to do, but um, I guess I'm doing something right. So, I mean, they're still posting my music, so... Yeah. Um, and and how did you get involved um, with a, a dog CD then? Uh, let's see here. Um, about three years ago, locally, um, 
One of my listeners is the behavioral director for the Atlanta Humane Society. And um, she likes my music a lot. She uses it to put herself to sleep every night. So she has it, you know, you know, bedside. And um, she approached me a while back about, um, I guess the Humane Society here in Atlanta was about to install a new sound system in the kennels. And, you know, dogs are so, you know, when dogs are being adopted, they're in such transition all the time, and there's lots of anxiety and and anxious and working and and then she said, you know, we should try using your music in you know in the kennel where we have all these dogs that are caged up. So um, I sent her all the CDs that I had. I sent her the whole collection, and um, like two weeks later, she wrote me back and said, "Wow, we are really." You know, this is working for us. You know, there's the barking has subsided, and they seem a lot, you know, a lot calmer. So that was the songs for Sophie CD. That was the first one, and then um, some friends of mine uh, were going to be featured in a book called uh, The Divinity of Dogs, and um, the book by uh, an author, Jennifer Skiff. She lives in Australia part time of the year, and she lives in Maine the other part uh, of the year half of the year and she's a huge uh, dog activist and rescues lots of animals and um, so some friends had a story about their dog that was going to be featured in the book and the book is about um, miraculous things that have happened through people's dogs in their lives from you know one of the stories for example is is about a woman who whose dog all of a sudden one day just kind of nudged her breast and it was a very unusual behavior the dog had never done that before and um kept doing it and it you know inspired her to go see her doctor and you know ironically when she did um they discovered that there was some cancer in her breast where the dog had been nudging so it was kind of like a, a divine intervention and you know it saved her life there's so many great stories in the book so um, I'm proud to be part of the, you know, of uh, the divinity of dogs. So the CD that we put together was, it, it kind of has dual purpose. It's it's a great soundtrack to read the stories of the book, but it's also, you know, it's also proof that, you know, our animals hear as we do, and they're very receptive to sound, and, you know, this gentle music has a calming effect on them as well. So it's kind of dual purpose. So, um, you know, it's great to read the stories by, but the dogs are loving it too. So are you going to make a cat? Are you going to make a cat too? Or, um, it's, <laughs> it's, well, it's certainly possible, but, um, divinity of dogs on Amazon right now, it's, uh, it's in the top last time I checked a couple days ago, it's in the top new age. Um, hot releases on Amazon. So it's been, got as close to number three. Uh, Holy, wow. <laughs> um, I haven't seen this segment, but the Weather Channel has featured some of the music. I think Jennifer has a, um, a segment with the Weather Channel, and she's talking about, <clears throat> you know, what to do in a storm, how to take care of a, your pets in inclement weather, and including the music, you know, that helps, you know, with the thunderstorms and dogs get all freaked out, providing peaceful music can kind of help them chill out a little bit. So um, I think that's what sparked all the uh, Amazon craze. So um, that's kind of very new news. So um, hopefully the word's getting out. Yeah. Great. And then um, Stacy asked, um, what does he think about these uh, free apps for uh, free listening of all kinds of music, like songs uh, and things like that? Um, I let's see. I don't know. There's so many coming out now. I'm I'm not familiar with Songza yet. Um, there's the top some or these things that are free. I mean, I'm certainly um, exposed to music that I've never heard before in many cases and if I like them, you know, write to that song and buy it so I uh, you know yes it's free but if it ex you know 
if it exposes to people to music that they might, you know, never have heard before, and they go and purchase it, I think it's a great thing. So. Yep. And then you're also been um, on P PBS, right? Too. Yeah. Yeah. They've used some music on some of their documentaries, uh, Visions of Italy, Visions of Greece, and then there was one called um, Brava Italia. So. Um, so that's been great exposure. And uh, like I said, you know, hopefully the next step will be more, <clears throat> you know, I'd love to go to Sundance. I'd love to, you know, go to, go to the Golden Globes and, you know, have some of my music featured in a, in, you know, in a major film. And um, that's a dream. So I'm putting it out there. No, it's not a dream. It will happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, um, with, with your with your music too, um, do you what do you do you see yourself doing this continuously throughout the, um, in the future too? I do I do? Um, it's just yeah, it's 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 comfortable. It's uh, I'm sure it'll, like, the music will evolve, but I really do feel like um, combining visuals with the music, you know, so. Whether it's a documentary, I love um, time lapse photography. So maybe it's something like that. You know, um, I would like to also start doing more videos that accompany my music, so people can get a visual, um, you know, feel for what I'm trying to, you know, ex you know, express in the music. So I definitely want to start adding another dimension to the music, so people can see and hear it. Yep. And then Stacy also asked, um, um, how does it affect um, the selling of your music um, with those free apps and stuff? Do you think it affects it or helps it? Totally. Okay. I mean, because like I said, you're going to be exposed to music that you've never heard before. And if you like it, most people will, you know, you don't have to make a $10 commitment. You can just, you know, buy a few songs from an artist that you like. And, you know, so I think it's certainly a good thing. Yep. And, and then um, for well, one second, uh, with your with your piano too, um, do you just have one piano or many pianos or? I just have one piano. Do you have a name for it? A name for my piano? No, yeah. I have a name. For it. <laughs> <laughs> this is piano. It's a Bosendorfer, and so she calls it Bo. Apparently, did you know that? No. <laughs> And and do you actually record at your house then? I do. I mean, this is uh, you're we're in my studio basically, which is in my home. So uh, the beauty with that is that when I'm inspired to play, I can record. And this is a digital piano, so um, everything is recorded, you know, uh, in a MIDI a format. So um, I record right into my computer when I'm in the, when I'm in my groove, you know, my when I'm in the mode to create. And so um, even though I can't write it down physically, it's captured so I can save it and, um, you know, expand on it. Or actually the Passion CD really was just about three hours of me sitting down and playing. And um, all of these little themes were just kind of one after the other. It's, it's almost in its, almost in the exact form that it was created. Yeah, but, and it seems like a lot of musicians say that too. I mean, everything's created in such a short amount of time, but does it take a long time before that to build up to that moment then, right? And like I said, it's been, um, it's been a long time since I've actually been so inspired to create new music. So it's been brewing for a long time. And then when it came out, it, you know, it really did. I mean, I, I couldn't stop, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you have to worry about acoustics at all um, in your in your studio there, or just because it's, it goes right? That's the beauty of it. I mean, I usually have headphones on, and I'm basically playing for myself, and I just usually record as I go once I'm, you know, in a quiet place, and I've got the mood set, and... Um, so I don't have to worry about acoustics. I remember back in the day when I first recorded my first couple CDs, they were in old piano stores, and there was, you know, a friend of mine, Bradley Hedrick, was the producer for the first CD that I did, 
and uh, we had to deal with recording, you know, in the middle of a night, you know, in a in a small town in South Carolina, and you know, occasionally there'd be a train going by and trucks passing by, and so we had to, you know, we had to work around elements like that. That's you know, that's the old days. So now that I can record digitally, um, I don't have to worry about any of those. Um, outside interferences at all, so it certainly makes um, recording easier. And, and you know, I don't have to go to the studio per se. To you know, I do have a producer that takes what I do and we make it sound right. But uh, majority of what I do is right here, you know, at home. So um, that I think adds a level, whole level of comfort to the music. You know, I'm not under a time clock, and I can. You know, create as I as as I'm in the right place to do that. And how long and are, uh, how long is each CD on average then? Uh, usually an hour plus. Okay. So so it's great for the average massage therapists and stuff, and for their hour and yeah. And then um, quite a few people are asking if you wanted to play a little bit again. So. <laughs> I've never done this before, but I will try. Um, okay, everybody, don't put them on the spot, okay? <laughs> um, do we do that now? Uh, whenever you want, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I've kind of got... I'll just see if this works. You can just tell me if this works out, and we'll... Uh, I'm going to turn the camera to the piano, okay? Okay. So, here we go. All right. Can you see that okay? Yep, it looks great. So, let's see. Um, one of the new songs, the very first song on um, Passion, I could play for you. And uh, it's called A New Beginning. But I haven't played much of this music a lot, so I'm going to... Just give it a quick listen. I'll let you hear what the song sounds like on the album. And then I'll stop it and play it live. Is that okay? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is called, and this isn't available yet, but it will be in the next couple of weeks. So this is called A New Beginning. I'll let you hear a little bit. Can you hear that okay? Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, we're uh, so excited. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, that was incredible. I oh. <laughs> well, you that's the first time anybody heard that, so thank you for um um that's the premiere of a new beginning. Oh awesome. Yeah, Miss Carla says I'm I'm going to bed after this. Perfect. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Gloria Coppola said, uh, my, do my dog is sitting in my lap listening to the music, and David Otto says, massaging the ivories, so. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, God, that's, oh, I, I can't wait to get that CD and stuff like that, so we can, because I, I started out my practice a few months ago, so I want to definitely include that in my, my regular practice, so. You. you know, and and, and um, with 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 that, um, how long is that CD? It's a full hour. Full it's right hour. at an hour. Oh, it is right at an hour then. Uh huh. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's even better. <laughs> Five nine two or something. So, you know, it's an hour. Yep. <laughs> and what kind of comments um have you gotten from massage therapists about your music then? Um, a lot of a lot of people. I I I don't get sick of it. I, I play it continually, and so many great um you know comments. Just sometimes overwhelming. How uh, how I don't listen. Like I said, I don't really listen to it. So um, I create it and put it out there, and I and, and some people use it religiously. So I'm I'm grateful for all the support. Oh. Totally. Yep. Yep. And somebody said, um, "Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I'm looking forward to hearing all your music and stuff." So they can sample it. Um, some of them are on your website too, right? Um, yes. Yeah, some of the songs are available to uh, to to sample. Um, we don't have anything. There's not even a mention or a CD cover yet um, visible for Passions. But in the next uh, probably week and a half to two. It'll be on the website, and uh, it'll be available digitally, and we'll have hard copies for the first, you know, for probably the first year or two okay. that it comes out. Okay, great. And then you were um, in Greece this last year, too, and stuff like that. What inspired you to go there? Well, um, you know, both my parents were born in the States, but um, uh, both sides of my family were from Greece, so... Um, I was really close to my grandfather, and he has a house there. We still have his house that he grew up in. So that's where I spent um, most of my time when I was in Greece. And it definitely, uh, it's such an inspiring place. It's so beautiful. Um, the island that we have a house on is, uh, the island is called Patmos, and that is where um, there's a monastery there, and it was also where John was in exile when he wrote um Book of Revelation, so it has kind of a, you know, it's kind of a pilgrimage for lots of people to go um, to see where he was in exile. Um, it's a very tiny island. It's very peaceful. Great beaches. You know, you hop on a moped and go to the beach and have lunch. You know, at the shore. And uh, I love near. I really love being near the ocean. So that is, you know, a big fuel for me for my fire. In, in your, so, yeah, and your other love is photography. Did you do um, take a lot of photos there too and stuff? And, and that's the other thing that's going to be happening on the website soon is that um, we're going to have a uh, it'll be George Strula's photography. It'll be some of the photogra photographs that I've taken of my travel. There'll be a section on food. There'll be a section on old pianos and instruments, and um, so I'm going to be kind of branching out a little bit and offering some of my photography as well. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, um, is that going to be for like digital downloads for the pictures then or an actual book then or what is that going to be, you think? For hard uh, uh, photographs. And um, I do something, um, it's called woodblock photography. So a lot of times what I've been doing is uh, mounting my photos to, to woodblocks. So they're three dimensional. So um, you can create collages out of them, so that's another way that they'll be available. Is there anything you can't? Is there anything that you can't do? Um, what can't I do? <laughs> I can't do things. Yeah. What am I bad at? Um, can you dance? <laughs> I'm, 
Um, what else am I good at? Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> Not good. At <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then um, David Otto asks, um, can you ask George um, who his influence is, like uh, other music artists, perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a huge fan of David Foster, uh, who's produced lots of musicians. Uh, he's a great, you know, pianist and composer. Um, uh, Isham, who does a lot of film music, he's really big uh, for me. Uh, Patrick O'Hearn is another favorite artist. Um, Randy Newman. A lot of the a lot of the music that I am drawn to is again is uh, music for soundtracks and film because it is so moody and it you know kind of evokes all this emotion. So I think that's probably why I'm drawn to some of those uh, some of those artists. Um, Years and years ago, um, when Yanni was doing his thing, back when you know uh, his Acropolis album came out, I mean that certainly uh, resonated with me because Greek also, and we have sometimes a similar style. Um, you know, when he was just starting out, I mean his music had a very, and it still does, but as a very kind of melodic, romantic you know, kind of dramatic at times feel to it. And uh, so uh, he certainly had, a, an inf you know, an influence on me. And, you know, after I saw him live in concert, I was inspired and felt like, well, you know, if people like his music, you know, maybe they'll like mine. So he certainly had a big influence on me as well. Okay. And um, do, <clears throat> do um, artists actually sell um, sheet music at all then? or? Yes. And um, even though I can't read it, um, I'm having, I, I have had uh, two sheet music books uh, created of some of my original songs, and um, the Passion CD, which will be a collection of 19 songs, that will, that entire collection will be available as sheet music as well, so that's another thing that's going to be coming up next after we release the album. Oh, that would be great, well, because my, both my daughters are 10 and 6, they, they, they just started um, piano um, a couple months ago and stuff like that, and I'd love them to learn your music. And, yeah. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Play some. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the thing is, we didn't, we didn't even force them to get into uh, piano, they just heard it um, one day at a mall, and they were just really intrigued on um, how people, um, how this person was playing and stuff, and they just hooked, and they loved it ever since. So. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. And David asks, um, have you ever met Yanni? I've not. Yeah. <laughs> we should meet one day soon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then David says, um, you can kind of see some similar style and stuff with your stuff and Yanni's and stuff. And thank you. That's yeah. nice. Yep. And, yep. and we really haven't heard from much from Yanni and stuff, have you? Uh, I know that he's still touring. I think I saw him a couple years ago, and, and um, he was um, still, you know, still touring and doing the show that, you know, that people want to see, and that's, you know, a lot of his um, hits. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't kept up lately, but I need to see what he's up to now, because I, I, the last I th think he was doing some... Um, some of his compositions and adding vocalists to them. So, um, what I heard was really beautiful. Yep. And um, how do you get inspired about um, the pictures, uh, the the cover pictures for your CDs? Then, uh, I try to kind of keep it along with the theme of the album. Um, the passions, for example, uh, it's it's kind of um, different for me going to be very contemporary. It's going to be lots of reds and golds and yellow. It's actually photography that I've taken um, uh, for the cover and the inside booklet and everything. Um, I usually put a, a mug shot on the cover and I'm not going to do that this time. This is a little bit more, um, I don't know, uh, it's a very personal album, but it's kind of abstract, and everybody can kind of interpret, you know, interpret the songs as they, as they want, because it's all instrumental. That's that's what I like about doing what I do is everybody hears something different. Yep. 
And then Miss Carla asked kind of a question that we went over before, but she, she, um, I don't know if she came in late. But how did you start playing without learning how to read um, sheet music and stuff like that? Uh, so my mom at the piano, and and so she would be left side of the piano, and I'd be on the right, and I would play the melody, and so that's how I kind of started out when I was five, and then um, after I quit the lessons, after the five weeks of lessons that I hated. Um, I continued to play songs that I heard on the radio, like the Carpenters and John Denver, and, you know, uh, Kenny Loggins, whoever was big at the time, the, um, the Carpenters. I said that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so kind of um, pick those melodies up and just kind of recreate them, and you know, they were always slightly different. But um, after I started doing that, I started experimenting with, you know, creating my own songs. So that's how that. Happened. Yep. And um, yeah. do you get along? Um, do you um, hang out with other artists then too a lot? Or um, I don't. Hang, I mean, uh, when I'm recording an album, I do. Um, I have kind of an eclectic group of friends, and a lot of them are, are artists in different form. You know, in in different formats. So um, I'm very visual, so I like to be around the the visual arts as well as you know. Uh, music, so um, I, I don't hang out with a bunch of, of pianists or anything, but I mean, I certainly like to surround myself with artistic people. And what can we expect from you out of the future, then? Well, let's see here. Um, after the CD comes out, after Passions comes out, my next step is to release the sheet music and then the digital cookbook. That'll kind of be the companion for the CD. Um, so I'm kind of incorporating all my passions. Um, and then, uh, like I said, I hope that um, by just putting the word out there and um, I hope more soundtracks, uh, you know, and just and getting, the, you know, getting the word out about the music. I mean, um, I don't care to be famous, but, it, you know, I would love to embrace more listeners. So that's what I'm trying to Yep. yep, and the thing is, for massage, um, the average massage therapist, um, most of them know about you, so you are famous. So, <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> and then um, you're also pretty active on. Um, you got a Facebook page and everything else too. Then, and yes, I have a personal page and a musician page, and they're all kind of mixed up. But um, please stop by. Just search under George Skaroulis and you'll find me. Yep. yep. And, and your website again is what? My website is my, uh, just my first and last name. So it's georgescaroulis.com. Um, or uh, my record label is, I know it's a weird name, uh, it's Fzone Music, E V Z O N E music.com. And they'll both take you to the same place. That's my record label and my, you know, and my. Website in general uh, will take you both to the same. Okay, oh. awesome. Well, it's um, it's very nice to see you again. I mean, it's been so long, and we, we definitely got to um, meet again really soon. Okay, man. <laughs> You're in Atlanta. That would make perfect sense. You're going to be here, right? Yep. Yep. You'll see me. Yep, definitely. Yep. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for all the great questions and stuff in the chat and stuff. So, thanks, everyone. Live performance on cam. Oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone.